Welcome to the breakdown where we break down all the messed up shit. Now today we are checking out the movie Hound Dog starring a young Dakota Fanning as an intelligent and exuberant Elvis Presley fangirl named Llewellyn. Elvis Presley helps serve as a hand of hope for Llewellyn, who herself is subject to a lot of trauma no little girl should have to go through. Now this movie is extremely controversial because of a rape scene involving Llewellyn, but a lot of you guys requested this movie after No Child of Mine to keep that that child abuse theme so honestly this movie is not that bad at all but anything controversial is always on the wait list for this channel so if you want to see what happens including all the messed up parts stay tuned for the breakdown the movie starts off with well you know title screen but otherwise, our main character Llewellyn leads her friend Buddy to a secluded area in these pretty woods. It looks like they are playing a little game, promising to give Buddy a kiss if he shows his thing. Y'all know what a thing is. But of course he is scared to show that off. So after he does show what he's got, Llewellyn notices a bruise on his leg, saying she's got a bruise too from getting hit by her daddy. She's not a big fan of daddies. I'm gonna kill my daddy one day. Oh, I'm not. I am too. Could you it too if you want. No. Embarrassed and a little mad, Buddy decides to leave. Well, after Llewellyn gives him the little kiss she promised. After that little game, Llewellyn follows this cute ass doggy back to her daddy house. Man, I love doggy so much. But um, anyway, she Sam Fishers her way around the area, sneaking back in and silent jump scaring this woman who is a girlfriend of her dad. Her name is Ellen, and it's kind of funny because her dad's name is Lou, so it's like Llewellyn is a mix of both their names. Another thing about Llewellyn is that she loves her some Elvis, even performing his rendition of the song Hound Dog in front of her pops and Ellen. We then transition to Llewellyn at her actual residence, a few feet away from dad's place. She lives with her Elvis Presley hating grandma, who feels that her pops or moms can't take care of her. She thinks her pops is a dirty dog sometimes. But speaking of dogs, that doggy from earlier snuck into the turkey coop with hunger on his mind. Later next morning, Llewellyn bonds with Ellen, but then we hear a gunshot. Turns out that Pop shot the doggy, disregarding how sad Llewellyn would be. This is one of the first traumatizing things for Llewellyn, but then we see she kinda copes by singing Elvis. We see her singing in the trees like Tarzan, but let's hope she don't fall down and bust her damn head. I ain't the only one worrying, because this black man here named Charles says the same thing. He also schools her, saying the true African American origins of the many songs Elvis sings, but also saying you better keep singing yourself. Later though, Llewellyn gets a visitor, Buddy, who says Elvis is coming to town, giving him another kiss and excitement. Now this kiss is gonna represent something, because later during a bath, grandma tells her make sure you don't grow up too fast when it comes to relationship with boys. Okay, so I'm guessing the next day, Llewellyn comes over her pop's house to see Pop, but she instead sees Ellen. Llewellyn notices right away that Ellen got hit by Pops, giving her a beer to put on that eye. Things take a dark turn though when Ellen says the father left for good and ain't coming back, saying he left the girl with Ellen. This causes Llewellyn to react damn near violently and curse at the woman. She calms down though, because later at night she joins Ellen in bed, asking if she's gonna stay. Ellen avoids the question, but that avoidance is another way to say no, so Llewellyn next asks if she would take her along, and Ellen agrees to that request. In the morning, Ellen is gone, but Llewellyn is awake after hearing the new milkman coming through named Wooden's Boy. Now we all know Llewellyn is a nice and extrovert like girl who talks to anybody with whatever is on her mind, but we can tell that something is off about Wooden's boy who stares at her singing Elvis in bed. He's giving off some pedo vibes. Later though, after some fun in the water, Llewellyn and Buddy notice an abandoned car rummaging through it like it's nothing. It turns out though that it's getting towed and actually belongs to Ellen. Looks like she was lying about taking Llewellyn along with her. She even lies about knowing Llewellyn. Definitely a heartbreak to be lied to and ignored like that. Later, the girl sits in the tree, again conflicted and traumatized, but Charles sits idle next to her. He brings her to his snake handler place, where she listens to the original African-American origins of the Hound Dog song. 
Right here though, Jill Scott plays the original singer of the Hound Dog song, famous blues singer Big Mama Thornton. Well, that was a nice little shout out. But days later, Llewellyn's pops finds her at the store and gives her a new Elvis Presley record. Later while it's storming, Llewellyn and Buddy hide in a shed when it starts getting rough. But too bad for dad. He gets struck by lightning and suffers intensely on the ground. The grandma comes to the shed after, saying that God struck her daddy down. A day later, the grandma even suggests maybe it was her that struck him down, thinking she and the boy were doing sexual things that made God angry. Luckily though, Pops is still alive, but he came retarded from the accident. Those words from her grandma definitely affected her though, because she curves Bobby. Bobby? What? <laughs> because she curves Buddy when they hang around. One thing I'm happy about is the presence of this black man. <laughs> I meant to say Charles, excuse me. One thing I'm happy about is the presence of Charles because he seems to help her keep a clean mind even when dirty things happen all around her. Practically though, he teaches her that a dead snake always has the reflexes to still bite. Charles easily refutes all the guilty and belittling thoughts swimming around this girl's mind, especially regarding sinning and if it was her fault her dad almost died. Later, Llewellyn looks for money to buy a ticket to that Elvis concert, but also finds a picture of Ellen. Hmm, maybe Ellen has some history with this family. Grandma catches her taking her money and whips her hand even when she lies about what she will do with the money. Not being able to get that money makes the girl cry, especially since seeing Elvis is what held her head high, even with everything sad going on. Oh, where are my manners? The two kids are stealing fruit from the yard of a very rich old couple, but then their granddaughter, the girl who played as orphan comes out. In the streets, all the OGs call her Grasshopper. Later that night, Llewellyn walks down the dangerous road when a car comes up. It passes right by, but that car is special because it's holding Elvis Presley himself, who blows a kiss to his number one fan. To get ready to watch Elvis perform, Grasshopper gives her a nice hair makeover and one of her little dresses. But Llewellyn, that's a little too small for you. Just the existence of this dress feels conflict when the grandmother keeps accusing her of stealing. Regardless, another day passes by, and Buddy tells Llewellyn that Wooden's boy has a ticket to the Elvis concert. Y'all remember him, right? The milkman who needs to fix his damn face? Lame ass milkman. Look, I know that sounded rude, but after what we're about to see, he deserves worse than anything I could say. Well, they just got to pick up the ticket at this shed, and the two run as fast as they can. Wooden's bitch is hiding in the corner, saying he will give her the ticket if she does her little Elvis dance. While she does it, he whispers to Buddy, telling him to tell her to do it naked. Both kids seem a bit naive to this perversion, but she knows something isn't right about this, especially when Bitch Boy ignores her cries for the ticket, instead taking off his belt. So yeah, of course, she is pushed to the ground and is raped by Wooden's boy. This is the scene that was definitely controversial, especially when you have a child here acting a part of the scene. After Wooden's boy and Buddy leave her behind, like what? I'm guessing hours later, she finally gets up from the shed. It's always hard for me to see this walk, the same walk that Jennifer Hills did, and, and Mari Collingwood, and many other girls and women out there that have survived such an evil encounter. Again, like Jennifer Hills, she situates herself alone in an abandoned car all the way until the next day. Sadly, she didn't tell anyone. And later at church, not only does she have to listen to this rock and roll is the devil's music crap, but she also sees Buddy. Oh, you don't get to turn away. I see you're still a child, but you let your friend be taken advantage of and you didn't even try to give her any support. Grasshopper over there laughing and shit too. This causes Llewellyn to run outside and vomit in the bushes. After church is over, the dad calls over Buddy and Grasshopper, unaware of the tensions between the girl and them. And that's when we hear this shit. Who's your friend? This is Grasshopper. Buddy's taking me to see Elvis tonight. You are? Oh, you hear that? Run. They're gonna go see Elvis. What? Oh, brother. I don't know. I don't know if what's going on in this little boy's head, but if I were the same age as him, then he would be catching these hands. 
Okay, later that night, Luella sneaks off to listen to this Elvis concert, but her slow father awakens finding her missing. Meanwhile, the girl watches as Buddy delivers Grasshopper to her people. Like, I'm truly struggling to understand how he can watch his friend suffer and then completely ignore her like she was the bad guy. That's why he needs to catch these damn hands. Then, Buddy and his friends, including Wooden's boy, play pool at a hangout. Then randomly, Pop stumbles upon the place, naked, asking Buddy if he's seen his daughter. But the boys just bullet him with their pool sticks, paws. Then suddenly, Llewellyn pops up like Namek Goku or Sage Mo Naruto, dragging her father away. Back at home, Dad starts dancing the hound dog, but she starts screaming at her dad, who also screams back saying he can't take it anymore. All this screaming is loud enough to reach Grandma, who stays in her deep sleep. The next morning though, we see a car roll up, but it's not just anybody's driving, it's Ellen who has returned. She steps up on grandma's porch saying mama, meaning Ellen definitely wasn't just another girlfriend. Grandma ain't happy to see her daughter though, and it's revealed that Ellen is definitely the aunt of Llewellyn. Now Ellen wants to actually take care of the girl, but grandma hates her for many reasons, threatening to shoot her if she don't leave. Meanwhile, Llewellyn visits Charles again, who helps wrap up a wound she has, obviously telling something is wrong with her. Unaware to both of them though, Ellen looks for the girl, finding her way to Charles' place. After the girl leaves, Charles hears Ellen screaming, finding her on the ground with a bite from a rattlesnake. Luckily though, she got bit near Snake Anti-Venom Maker. It turns out though, Ellen knows Charles back when they were kids. Charles thinks Llewellyn needs a mom in Ellen. Back with Llewellyn though, she seems to have an illness, probably a manifestation of all the strong emotional trauma she has. Then later that night, for some reason, Buddy and Wooden's boy hang out around Charles' place. They talk about what they did to Llewellyn, which is overheard by Charles, who now feels compelled to help out Llewellyn. He sneaks into the girl's house, who is busy hallucinating snakes all around her. He picks her up and takes her back to his place, asking for her to sing Elvis with him in the band. He also gives her words of wisdom to be strong and always turn negative into something positive. He lets her get rid of all her grief out on him, and once she lets it all out, she comes back to sing with the band. Slowly but surely, Charles guides her into recapturing her shine. The next morning, he gives her a parting gift of a rattlesnake rattle, and also gladly, she finds a cute little puppy. Ellen drives by too, influencing her to come along with her. Llewellyn goes to check with her dad and grandma about it, but really, she's going to say her last goodbye to them. She tells her dad that she loves him, and the movie ends as she walks away from her ignoring grandma and her dad that got bit by a dead rattlesnake. She walks right back to Ellen's car, ready to have a new life. Now, I like to believe in that universe, Llewellyn became a very famous singer and actress. So yeah, it probably wasn't that bad, but I felt the controversial scene alone qualifies to film for this series. Now, when it comes to a very bleak film, y'all should definitely stay tuned for the video I'll drop tomorrow. So anyway, let's talk about the most disturbed moment and most enjoyed moment in that spooky stuff. So let's get right into it. The most disturbed moment is easily the rape scene. It's half the reason why I did the movie, but I've always said how if there's rape in a film, it's always usually the most disturbing moment. The most enjoyed moment is easily for me the ending. I'm glad she can live a life she deserves to live, rather than a life surrounded by things that have a negative effect on her. Now if only Woody's boy was stitched to somebody's butthole, then that would have made it even better. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you click that damn like button and click it right now because some of y'all be accidentally fucking around and clicking the dislike button. I see y'all. Here on the left is a pretty harder film to take in called No Child of Mine that is a bit similar to this one. Here on the right is probably some random film YouTube thinks you should check out. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.